we're actually going to pay a little homage to my favorite YouTuber, um, Hannah Hart from My Heart Toe. Um, she does My Drunk Kitchen, and today we're actually going to cook with some wine. Now, don't worry. I know you said that, uh, or I said earlier that my kids are going to help me out and that they'll be eating this. The thing about alcohol is when you cook with it, it leaves its lovely flavor, but it takes out the alcohol when you cook it because it evaporates. So no worries. And if you happen to need to try it out, mm, don't worry. Drink responsibly. <laughs> now, I'm using a local vineyard here in Arkansas called Post. This is a red muscadine. It's very sweet. Now, her recipe calls for a dry, dry red wine, and I don't really know much about wine. I'm under the doctrine of use something you'll drink. Um, if you won't drink it, it probably won't taste that good. I've tried different variations, and there are some red wines that I don't care for. I like the sweeter wines. So definitely go for something that you'll drink. And also, if you have a winery around, support local. That's one of our paleo tenants that is often forgotten about. Uh, it's not just about what we put in our mouth, it's also about who we support. Okay, I'm trying to get this pumpkin open and I'm gonna implore you guys to do as I say, not as I do. Because I am basically butchering this pumpkin. Um, use a much sharper knife than this. Google it, somebody Google it for me. Oh, this is a pain and I'm only halfway through. Whew. It's times like this I wish my husband was home. Oh, oh, oh. Um, the thing is, is I'm very accident prone in the kitchen, especially with my knives, and I often cut myself. I even have a really bad scar. I don't know if y'all can see that right there. And it's from getting distracted. Ow. See, I put my hand down on the little knob. All right, now, once you have carefully and successfully, this is gonna be full of bloopers, guys. <laughs> Go ahead and pull out the top. Now, I wanna tell you, you can do a lot of things with these seeds. You can shell them and you can bake them. They're absolutely delicious. Um, I use raw papitas, which are pumpkin seeds, in my Presto Pesto. That's the video I use these in. Um, you can also save these, and if you have a garden, you can plant them and get more pumpkins. You know, that's really a bang for your buck right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and I'm going to gut all these seeds out of it. I'm going to peel it. I'm going to cube it. And then I'll get back to you and show you what else I'm going to do. Okay, if you would like to know whose house smells amazing, it is totally mine. Because this roasted pumpkin is under the broiler. I'm going to turn it over in a few minutes after it's a little golden brown, cook it for another 10 minutes, and then we'll pull it out and puree it, and then we'll be ready to move on. I wanted to share with you guys one of my tips that I have for when you're doing a lot of things for one meal and you really need to kind of have your stuff together. I recommend prep work first. Um, trying to work while you're cooking a, you might end up burning something, you might not. You might be a really good multitasker and that might be fine, but if you're just beginning, you might just need to do one thing at a time. So I suggest prep. So what I've done here, the ingredients you're gonna need is um, a third a cup of olive oil, which I have here, and this is the stuff that I've been using recently. Uh, we are gonna need one yellow onion dice. We are gonna need four cloves of garlic. Mine are kinda small, so I have five. We're going to do a cup of sliced mushrooms. I used organic portobellos, which are my favorite. Um, I have wine right here. Again, I used the red muscadine from a local vineyard here in Arkansas called Post. It's a very sweet wine, and I definitely love it. Um, I have, this is not chicken broth. This is actually beef broth, but, you know, we're not going to split hairs here. Um, the 15-ounce can of pumpkin, if you can uh, pick up an organic can of pumpkin puree at Kroger's for a dollar or two, go ahead and do that. I just happen to have a pumpkin, so I'm going through the long process of making my own puree, but it's a good thing to learn and a good thing to know how to do. Uh, let's see, we need two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is actually really handy. All you do is you squish it on top, 
and then the juice falls down here, you can pull out any seeds. Um, I don't know what this is called, but it's absolutely amazing. We also need, oh, to check on our pumpkin. Now, guys, don't forget, use pot holders. Be careful. Ah, oh, look at how amazing that is. This has to be about one of my favorite things. My broiler is my best friend. So I definitely, definitely love trying to cook things under it. It gives that wonderful roasted flavor. I'm just gonna toss these around. All I did was put olive oil. I put salt. I put some fresh cracked black pepper because it's my favorite. You can omit that if you are AIP. But it is a stage one reintro because it's a berry spice, so a lot of people can get it back in. It is not a nightshade like some people think. But all right, that looks like it's pretty well turned over. It's coated in the um, olive oil so it won't burn. And I actually saved half my pumpkin because I'm going to go try to find a good balsamic vinegar. And I'm going to see what I can do with it by itself for a side dish while pumpkins are plentiful. We're going to stick that back in. For another, let's say, five minutes. Now we're going to come back over here and finish our talk. So um, that's on the way. We're going to puree that and we'll come back and I'll start cooking everything. But I also got all my spices out on a small plate. This is just a regular saucer and I have basil. The recipe did call for parsley. But I did not have any. This is um, oregano and this is thyme and this time actually I dried myself. This is actually fresh basil and uh, I just cut it up finely. Now remember you're going to be blending this sauce so if it's not perfect don't worry about it. Next thing I'll show you is putting it all together. Okay to get started I have some water with some salt in it that I'm having Bring, uh, I'm bringing to a boil because I'm actually going to do some um, gluten-free noodles tonight. Um, I am starting to test my boundaries to see what I can and can't tolerate anymore since I started a digestive enzyme. I have my ground beef here ready to go and I'm going to start this by preheating my pan, getting the oil hot. Now while we're waiting for that to heat up, I kind of want to share a couple tips with you guys. So I poured this olive oil in. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put it up. And a lot of people ask me questions and um, you may see the batch cook. It may have already been posted. It may be posted soon. Um, whichever way it goes, look for that. And this is kind of how I get in the habit of cleaning as I go. I use it and I put it up. You know, and that's also organization too. I'm not going to put my spices way over there where I can't get them. I'm going to get them right here where I can use them. I have all my spices here below. I do have my knife block in here simply because we have little kids. Um, and then I have oils, vinegars, honey, things like that up here. And then I have all my extra jars up there. And so that's one thing to do. Also, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. And then when I'm done with it, I'm going to put it up. Just a simple tip real quick. All right, step number fun. We are going to add in these mushrooms and these onions. Remember, your pan should be hot enough that, that it, it can sizzle. Now, the only thing that I'm gonna do differently that she didn't do is I'm actually gonna add some salt to this because I want it to help let the juices come out. And another tip and trick, because it seems like I'm just full of them today. This is a microplane. Well, this is a hand grater, but you can get a microplane, and these are absolutely amazing to cut your garlic in half. Well, your time chopping garlic in half. You just want to simply rub it on it, and the rest falls through. It's one of my favorite tips, honestly. And after the tornado, the first thing I went out to go buy was a microplane. That tells you how much I love it. Um, another tip that you may consider is 
I keep my plates handy so I can set all my things on it. But when I get ready to use all these things, I go ahead and set everything by the stove. I even got the whisk out that I'm going to need to use. So that just kind of helps with being able to move smoothly. And you can also, while things like that are cooking, you can come back over here. Sorry for the fan if that's a little noisy. But you can come out and dump your garbage bowl out. Get that over into the sink. And then you're halfway cleaned up. It's not going to be as big of a deal when you get done after doing all this amazing hard work. Our onions are nice and translucent. The mushrooms are browning and they are a lovely golden state. Excuse my awesome father-in-law who's mowing our yard for us. I'm sure y'all can probably hear that. Now this may be a little difficult for me to show you guys single-handed, but we're going to do our best. I'm going to add the wine. Now if you have a flame or you cook with a gas stove, remember alcohol is flammable. Just be careful. Alright, we're going to add in our wine. We're going to add in our chicken stock. Or sorry, I think I used beef stock, but she called for um, chicken. Now, here, I've got to get this pumpkin puree out. You can see how awesome it turned out. Now, it's a little yellow. So, I'm wondering if the color will be affected at all. Because, you know, if you get pumpkin puree, it's bright orange. Alright. And what we're going to do... Oh, I'm sorry. We also have to add our lemon juice. salt and if you've reintroduced it or don't have any problems with pepper I added pepper just because like I've said many a times it is one of my favorite spices especially when it's freshly cracked now what she says to do is to whisk this in so I'm going to carefully just go through here since I have a not very deep pan this is a very large saucepan but we don't want to make a huge mess make it easier on us and I'm going to whisk this in here to evenly distribute it. We're going to let this simmer for 30 minutes. We're going to add some of our spices and then we'll call it a night. <coughs> All right, guys, let's see you try your spaghetti. Let me know how you like it. Mark de Boo. What do you think, Rylan? It's good. You like it? Yeah. What about you, Madison? Mm. Good. What about you, Marky Poo? I got it. <laughs> I'm glad y'all like it. Should I try it? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Hey, the kids said I should try it, so I'm going to go ahead and take a bite. Mm. You know what? I left out the parsley, and I think some parsley on top would be good if you had some fresh. But other than that, it tastes really good. It's flavorful, and you can fool me. Now, it might be a little easier to fool me because I haven't had tomato sauce all year, and it's October 1st when I'm filming this, but... Mm. Yep, it's definitely very good. I think the ground beef goes really well with it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll leave Brianna's recipe in the description box below. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below for me, or you can go to the recipe itself and ask her. I really love this recipe. All of her recipes that I've tried are really impressive, so I totally encourage you to go support her, go read some of her recipes. She's got a great book out, and show her some love and support. Um, I hope you'll also come back and help support me by liking this video or hitting the subscribe button. And I want to remind you guys that there's no wrong way to cook except for to not cook at all. We'll see you next time.